Well, hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of The Shooting Show, and yes, I'm holding our new 460 conversion on this great Kimber 1911 here, friends. And I tell you, I want to uh, express our appreciation to everyone who has called about our new cartridge and our new gun conversions. And uh, certainly something else I want to show you, this is a new Shooting Show Dan Wesson right here just fresh from the factory and uh, the Dan Wesson company is going to be the first production revolver in our new cartridge and hopefully we'll have a test on the new Dan Wesson and 460 rolling on next week's program if we can get on the air next week certainly hope so uh, we're darn sure gonna try I promise you that so a lot of exciting things are happening friends and honestly as soon as we can get this to market uh, we're supposed to have our first uh, ammo in this next week uh, that we'll be doing some tests on with properly head stamped 460 Roland and it is exciting because you know what this is going to hopefully hopefully we'll sell a few guns here now and it'll help us stay on the air and help us to reach more people now we hope so it won't really go on sale until uh, after uh, the first of February probably or the latter part of of this month and I tell you what of course the first thing we got to do is we're gonna have to the, the monies we get will will certainly help us stay on the air which is very expensive and of course we have some loans to pay back <laughs> but but we appreciate uh, so much the the people those of you out there that have helped uh, sincerely because we couldn't have done it without you so see uh, there's some folks that uh, certainly can take some credit in our support group and and also just some viewers of the program that we really appreciate your help because that's how we're doing this and I really don't know and I was telling uh, our studio editor earlier said well we'll have a, a limited amount of time to make something on these guns because I promise you there will be some other companies out there that uh, in the gun business that are going to try and they'll try and and, and steal it they'll try and take <laughs> they will uh, they'll try and, and, and take over the marketing of guns and cartridges, but hopefully we'll have a window of time that will allow the project to make money. Now, I don't think, if you're watching this program today, I don't think I have to dramatically explain why it's important that we remain on the air because friends look what is happening the good news as we're taping this this is friday and this show will air for the first time a couple of days later on sunday uh... the senate is trying to uh... get up enough courage to maybe give bill clinton his slickness himself a trial but i heard gordon liddy on the radio a little bit earlier and he said well trent lott and the republican leadership they're going to if at all possible make a preemptive surrender oh my let's don't fight about it wait a minute wait a minute this impeachment trial is such a small blip on american history wait a minute whoa whoa you're talking about here in the united states we're talking about the people that survived the American Revolution, that survived the war between the states, that survived World War I, World War II, the Depression. Wait a minute, we're not lightweights. And that's what the silly media and some of these, <laughs> some of these limp-wristed, some of the religious people out there, they're saying, oh, let's just all hold hands and let's just forgive Clinton and uh, let's don't rock the boat. Why not rock the boat? we're not gonna get it fixed see friends this is what we have to do we've got to call attention and say wait something's wrong here something's wrong when we don't have a congress or we have a senate and you have elected representatives are saying look okay uh, 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 Clinton yeah he lied and yeah he misbehaved but uh, uh, the country's doing okay so let's leave it alone no that's not what they're sent there to do they're sent there to do what's right and this is a whole new concept to so many people in modern America and friends, as we've said many times, we're betting that there are enough red-blooded, real Americans left to salvage this thing. And we are rushing toward the new world order. The, uh, Clinton has signed this executive order, 13107, which essentially has the potential to erase the Bill of Rights. Now, wait a minute, friends. Now, we know Clinton's a criminal. We know he's a liar. We know a lot of his friends have turned up dead. But, you know, no single man 
or even group of men off in Washington, D.C., or New York City in the United Nations, or at the Economic Union in Europe, they shouldn't be allowed to erase our Bill of Rights. Absolutely not. They should not be allowed to tinker with the greatest document written in modern times, which is the U.S. Constitution. Now, that's what we're up against, friends, and that's why it is so important that we continue getting our message. This is the only place on television that you will get our combined message here on this shooting show. It's the only place there is. And we're fighting to expand. One, we're fighting to just stay on the air. And we've been able to do this because of your contributions and some very courageous sponsors. And your contributions are extremely important. And it is very difficult. And if you can help us, please do. But let me read something to you. You know, from time to time, we cite uh, articles out of the New American Magazine. And we're going to do it again today. This is the um, d uh, January 18 issue of the New American. And we've had some folks out there, and of course, we have not backed down. I tell you what, we've hit the NRA hard. They deserve it. And the New American Magazine, when they print, report and print, news articles. Let me tell you what, friends, they don't miss. Now, they're as good a news reporting magazine as is available in the United States. And they've got an article here entitled, The Great American Gun Grab. We won't, we won't go through the whole thing, but there's several pieces here. And those of you out there who have questioned the information that we've given you on what the NRA has and has not done, let me just read a couple of things. And, you know, Ms. Dole is talking about running for president. Well, she's saddled with, with old Bob. <clears throat> and Bob Dole should be ashamed of himself. Listen at this. Let me just read a couple of brief portions of this article in the New American Magazine. The step-by-step -step erosion of the Second Amendment, as exemplified by such measures as the Brady Law, has been abetted, which means aided, by powerful Republican leaders and gun rights groups who have opted to compromise rather than stand firm on principle. In 1993, after a filibuster by pro-gun senators had turned back two attempts to bring the Brady Bill to a vote, the bill appeared to be dead for the year. Even its strongest backers were admitting defeat. But then, Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole, Republican from Kansas, supposedly anxious to preclude the possibility of having the issue arise during the 1994 elections, offered a ludicrous compromise that served as the pretext for terminating the filibuster and enabling the bill to pass. There's more. When the final version came to a vote under a unanimous consent agreement get this, with only three senators, including Dole, present. There were only three of them in the Senate chamber. Dole could have blocked it single-handedly, but chose not to do so. He supposedly told reporters he was happy to have this issue behind us. Okay. Now that's bad enough, right? Worthless Bob Dole? Okay. There's more. Down here it says, USA Today for October, you know the newspaper, USA Today, October 26th, 1993, quoted James J. Baker, who used to be with the Institute for Legislative Action, and now he's back with them again, brought back under the dictatorship of, oh, I'm sorry, under Wayne LaPierre's regime there. It says he was then the executive director of the NRA's Institute, saying, Quote now from James J. Baker. Heck, we even had him on the show. I didn't, had no idea the man would turn on us like this. Okay. Says, quote, we already support 65% of the Brady Bill because it moves to an instant check, which is what we want, unquote. Now, that's James J. Baker representing the National Rifle Association. He took Tanya Matox's place. He's back up there in the same position now says here, as Neil Knox, head of the Virginia-based Firearms Coalition and a former NRA vice president, recently recalled, quote, Baker, almost as much as NRA executive director Wayne LaPierre, is perceived as the father of the instant check, which the ATF and FBI are attempting to implement as the heart of national registration for firearms. You know what, friends? If the NRA had stood firm 
when they could have. If they had represented us as gun owners, we wouldn't even have the Brady Bill. And that's also the conclusion that the New American makes here. It says, what is unquestionably true, we, they wish the NRA well on this new law, little lawsuit they filed, but says such expensive and time-consuming legal action would likely not be necessary now had the NRA stood firm on principle against the Brady Bill from the start. Now, friends, let me tell you what this means. They sold us out. This Brady Bill instant check is a historical event because for the first time in American history, we're having to get permission from the federal government to own a gun. And we're talking any gun. A 22, a 22 single shot, a Browning automatic rifle, a Smith & Wesson handgun, whatever. And let me ask you this. Which agency of the federal government do you trust? Which one? You trust the FBI? Hey, after Waco, after Ruby Ridge, after, whoa, whoa, you trust them? You trust the IRS after what's come out on them? You trust ATF, again, after Waco, after Ruby Ridge? I, you know, do you trust the executive branch? You trust Bill Clinton? You trust Janet Reno and the Justice Department? Who do you trust? Wait a minute. Which agency? And these people are having to grant you and I permission to own guns for the first time in American history. Now, you think we're not in trouble here, friends? You think we're not in trouble? And that's the mess we're in. Now then, if you'd like to belong to an organization that is doing something, the Gun Owner Rights Association, our little group here, if you'd like to join us, because what we're going to do, we're going to stay on television and radio and do everything we can to reach more Americans. Because this is the only chance we've got, friends, as gun owners and as free Americans. They've got to be reached on television. There is not currently a media channel that will allow the truth to get out and not on a continuing basis. For example, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, in the, within the last two weeks, the Canal Zone uh, has the, all U.S. troops, which in the Canal Zone, in the Panama Canal, are going to have to be evacuated, gotten out of the Canal Zone. Now, you know, the Chinese military already has control of both ends of the Panama Canal. Think about it. And all U.S. personnel are going to have to leave the Canal Zone. Didn't get in the news anywhere, just almost nowhere. And the only reason I found out about it was because I saw Pat Buchanan uh, talking about why the news media, wondering why the news media didn't even talk about it. But you know what, friends, there's a real possibility there will be a division of Chinese military, Chinese army soldiers in the Canal Zone. You tell me what in the world, why do we need Chinese soldiers in the Canal Zone? What's that for? Now, if I recall, we built the Panama Canal because we needed to get shipping through that would be advantageous to the United States. It wasn't built as an international canal zone. It was built by the United States. You know, there was some need where we could move the Atlantic Fleet to the Pacific Ocean or the Pacific Fleet to the Atlantic Ocean if we needed to and needed to do it a lot quicker than going around South America. You know, there's a reason that we built that canal zone and guess what? We have given it away. So see, that didn't get in the news, friends. That You didn't hear about that, but you heard it here. I tell you, <clears throat> we are in serious straits. If you want to join our Gun Owner Rights Association, you can send $50, a $300 life membership, because, heck, we don't do something five, six years. It may not even be that long. It may just be a couple of years. We won't have guns at all in this country. And then our country will be a police state. When we as we as citizens are disarmed, then we'll be a police state. And then when uh, those folks in the nice ninja suits come to your door, you're going to have to go out and you're going to have to get on your knees and say, please, Mr. Stormtrooper, please, please don't take my family. That's what it's going to be. Well, I don't want that. And I don't think you do either. Will you please help us stay on the air, friends? Will you please help us? If you can, Send us any contribution. Five dollars is a big one to us. Anything we can get to help us stay on the air. If you can join our Gun Owner Rights Association, if you can, it's fifty dollars. Send it, please, to the shooting show, 327 Irvin Roland Road in Dubberly, Louisiana. The zip code is 71024. Whatever you can do. When we have our guns for sale, which will be in a few weeks, uh, 
please consider buying one of our 460 Roland uh, conversions, one of our, our new guns, if you, if you can, if you can justify it, please do. Because one, it's, it's a tremendous cartridge. There's nothing else out there even approaches it for what it is. And a lot of you really, will really enjoy the power. You know, that's one thing about our defense load, over 700 foot-pounds of muzzle energy, and how many, you know, if you're defending your life, you may not get but one shot if you have to. So, friends, that's where we are. Judge will be here a little bit later playing, too, and we've got a, a really, we've had so many compliments, and, and uh, people have enjoyed seeing some past features. We're going to do some past features today, and we've got a piece from, if we have time, from our good friend, uh, uh, Bruce Warren with BC Armory. He's made a terrific uh, tape on reworking, doing some work on some guns. I, I hope we get that on today. And we appreciate you being there with us. And let's start another shooting show. I'll tell you what, friends. The 45 is a great caliber, but you get a power level like this with the 45, shooting a load that's been uh, certainly promoted for defense all these years. Water bottle on your right. Hey, and good performance for what it is, for what it does. But a lot of us would rather have something more on this order. Yeah, there's a difference. Our new 460 Roland cartridge and gun combination. Tell you what, friends, please, if you would, please talk this up for us because they will be available. We're hoping around the 1st of February, end of January, and we're going to need your help to help us promote this thing. It'll certainly be good for the whole project. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Friends, here it is. This is the great Georgia Arms 45 DA Colt or double action Colt cartridge. This is the first major improvement on the Colt 45 since 1873. They have this in loaded cowboy ammunition. They're also selling brass so you can load your own combinations. This cartridge case is absolutely a joy to work with. We're even seeing improved accuracy, we think due to the slightly larger rim on our 45 DA Colt case. You can get a free catalog, or you can order these from Georgia Arms, 1-800-624-6861 for their entire lineup, and please tell them you saw it here on our show. Now, friends, of course, the cowboy load is mild but super accurate. And, of course, you can take your hand loads up to the limit of what the loading manuals will allow. The great 45 double action Colt cartridge from Georgia Arms. Give them a call today, friends. A free phone call with a free catalog. 
And, of course, we realize that not everyone out there has 45 double-action revolvers or single-action whatever else. You may need shells for your 9mm or your 357 or your 44 Magnum or who knows whatever else, your 308 rifle or your 7mm Remington Magnum. Well, Georgia Arms has the best across-the-board lineup of handgun and rifle ammunition that's available in this country, friends, and they're helping us to stay on the air. Please call them and get a free catalog, and please tell them you saw it here. Now, friends, let's go back in time and revisit Chief AJ. This was a feature we had on back in early 1991, one of the very first shows. I think you'll enjoy this. When a young person got a 22 rifle, the way they taught him to shoot was with these wooden blocks. Sometimes they had glass balls, but wooden blocks were easier to get. And they didn't tell him to put that on the fence post, to hold the rifle up there and shut one eye and strain at it, but they taught him to just take that block and throw it up and hit it. This is one of the best ways to learn to shoot. There's three ways to learn to be a good shot, and that is shooting, shooting, and more shooting. We'll get warmed up here a little bit more. that everybody pesters me about and that's what they said was that Lucky McDaniel could shoot aspirin tablets out of the air. Now this video is going to be about instinct shooting and about moving target marksmanship. And I'm going to teach you the difference between instinct shooting and marksmanship but we're just going to go ahead and get this aspirin tablet out of the air shooting out of the way. The way I like to do it is to start big Go to a 45 case and then down to the aspirin. Well, we got two out of three. We'll go for that again. Big one. Oh, we got that one. Three out of three that time. Now you've seen the instinct shooter. Now we go to field shooting. And this is the very best field rifle designed yet. And what I mean by field rifle is that I have control of everything that is in front of me. Now under 500,000 rounds this was developed. And after the world record rigor shoot of shooting 40,000 and 60 of those blocks out of the air, I wanted a good fast rifle. So five years later now, we have a straight stock, a butt plate that slides up onto your shooting shirt and then is surrogated to stay in place. We have a scout scope straight over the barrel. Everything on this rifle is straight. The stock is straight. The scope is straight over the barrel. Everything points straight to the target. There's only one thing that moves backwards on a rifle when you're shooting in the field, and that's your trigger. We do a fine tune job on these in the tribal workshop and that trigger moves backward very precious little because we put an over travel stop. On the 1022, part of our deluxe fine tune job is when the bolts are locked open and you put in your magazine, and this one has the delta feed, everybody wants a good banana magazine system while the delta feeds it, metal on metal, 30 shot, and then tap the bolt and you're shooting. Well, that's our field rifle for field rifle shooting. Right now, it's become accuracy and shooting small groups, and the action matches. 
So we have built up the Super Chief. We've taken the 1022, put on a 12 power Burris scope, a 20 and a half inch stainless steel barrel with a back pressure chamber for super accuracy that guides the bullet through right from the muzzle. Now these rifles probably have won $75,000 since I started making them a year ago. And they're setting records all over for the action type matches where you shoot down place or shoot small groups. So this is a rifle for small targets a long way off. So part of our fine tune job on the Mini 14 is the scout mount and that wonderful 50 ounce trigger with a over travel stop. That allows you to have a smooth trigger that moves just a fraction of an inch. And with a scout scope over your balanced hand, with that good select trigger, you can stay on target and have aimed fire faster than most any other semi-automatic rifle because it's one meter long, seven pounds, two ounces with the scope and capable of 30 shots just as fast as you can pull that trigger, but aimed shots, and that's what's important in a good field rifle. Well, I've shown you the Mini-14 Scout Rifle. Now it's time to see some shooting. And here is Tom Wombles shooting the Mini-14 Scout Rifle at various targets. Burn powder and spit lead Tom. time we're going to show the practical application of these rifles and we're going to give you a demonstration of what it would be like if you came to Tusco, Illinois to move rifle, learn rifle marksmanship from Chief AJ himself. Okay welcome to uh, Chief AJ's rifle training camp and today we have Bob and we have Gila and we're going to instruct them in moving target marksmanship. Now the little scout rifles that they have are exactly one meter long and they weigh exactly six pounds and they're equipped with a burnt Burris German three post scout scope. Now this is what your sight picture is going to look like. And what you're going to do is to overlay the target with the sight picture. You're going to interface it. Doesn't the chief know computer terminology of 1991? But it's simple. You got one sight picture. This is called a German three post and where that little picket is, that's where you put it. Now guy, let me take your rifle and you hold this. Now just look at your target, Gila, and just overlay it with that. That's it. Now bring it down and just overlay your target with that sight picture. Now anybody could take a rifle, stand here, get on that target, weave around till they get a sight picture, and shoot it. But that's not what we're here to learn. We're to learn to be in the field, look over the muzzle, identify the target, one fluid motion come up, and squeeze the trigger in one motion. Sight picture, squeeze the trigger in one motion. Good hit, Gala. Now that's it, second shot he got him. No matter what that target does, you keep your sight picture. This is marksmanship. That away. I see a whole shot right in there. Put your muzzle up, Bob. He hit that bird just a half inch off center. I'm hitting a four inch target moving along the ground. Tom, I think you better go back a little bit and roll them a little faster for Bob. For the past year, we've been building up these Super Chief rifles with that big 7 8 inch stainless steel barrel because all the bench rest shooters know that stainless steel barrels shoot the best and hold their field edge of accuracy the longest. So now we have a camera down range to watch the bullets going through the targets and Tom is shooting the Team AJ big Super Chief rifle. We're doing this for you callers out there. You call into the travel workshop and you say, how good will the Super Chief shoot at 50 yards? So right here in a live demonstration, we're going to shoot the RW50 match ammunition, Ely brown label ammunition, and we're going to shoot federal high power copper coated high speed ammunition live for the camera so you can tell how good the Super Chief shoots at 
50 yards. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. One of these great Kimber, this is our shooting show model, uh, full size, the Johnny Rowland Signature model. When you can make those hits out there with a mirror at 100 yards, and when you can make consistent hits on targets out at 200 yards, well, just imagine how easy it would be at 25 yards. Or at defense range. If you'd like to have one of our shooting show Kimbers, be it compact or the full size model, or if you just want the best 1911 that money can buy at a very good price, the best factory production 1911 semi automatic pistol ever built by any factory. Give us a call here at the program, 318-377-5189, or you can write to us, send an FFL. We can wholesale these guns. Send an FFL to the shooting show, 327 Irvin Roland Road in Doberly, Louisiana. The zip code is 71024. Well, friends, we're going to have a segment today on gun safety. And in fact, we have to do this periodically, realize that we're having new people tune in each week to our program that don't know much about these guns. Certainly, all they know is what they've seen on television. Now, isn't that a hoot? <laughs> you know? That's all they know is what they've seen in movies and TV. And the first thing I want to touch on, and those of you who, who are uh, experienced shooters, you will certainly understand what I'm talking about. But a lot of things on television that look so harmless uh, can really get people hurt. Now, let me show you something here. Now, we're going to talk about twirling a revolver. The first and most important piece of information I can give you about twirling a revolver is don't do it. It's stupid. Do not twirl any firearm. Why in the world? I cannot imagine. And we've seen the movies. In fact, I saw a recent movie where they had a scene with uh, uh, one of the actors there and he was twirling the single action just around, around putting on a little show with it. Wait a minute, friends. Would you twirl a, a, a power saw? Would you twirl an electric saw? I mean, think about it. Just, I mean, think about it. Now, I'm going to take out the cylinder on this Super Blackhawk. And the reason that some of these folks used to get away with that sort of thing, I guess, was because on a single action, 
realize that when you pull the trigger, that hammers down, nothing happens. However, and we know this gun, these guns are unloaded, uh, two of them anyway, uh, on a double action revolver, and I check them three times to be sure they're unloaded. But see, on a double action, the trigger does two things. It cocks the hammer and releases it. Double action, two actions. Cocks the hammer and releases it. So uh, we have a whole different animal. And I guess twirling started back in, who knows, maybe it started in Hollywood, I really don't know. But we used to see it in the movies and thought that was, that was something that, that the cowboys did was twirl their guns. Now I have the cylinder out of this gun because that's how I feel about it. I'm not going to do it. I mean, I don't care if I know that gun's unloaded. I'm simply not going to do it. Now watch. If you twirl a gun, let's watch what happens. That barrel, that muzzle has got to, it's going to cross part of your body at some point. I mean, much less anybody else in the room. But see, it's going to cross. And a 44 Magnum at that range would blow your arm off, friends. It would actually, if my, if, with the right ammunition, it would take your arm off. Or you may shoot yourself in the head. I heard of an incident this happened. A young man uh, didn't know much about guns, had a semi-automatic uh, uh, gun, had seen twirling, and he had unloaded the, uh, he had taken the magazine out and said, well, there are the bullets right there, and he was going to twirl the gun. Well, guess what? Wonder if that gun's empty or not. We've taken the magazine out. There are the bullets we can see. Magazine's good and clear. Guess what? Let's see. Oops. The gun was still loaded. So we're talking about what, two things here. One, if you take the magazine out of semi-automatic, remember to check the chamber because it may still be loaded. But what had happened, that individual had twirled, had taken the magazine out, had twirled that semi-automatic, and it went off and a bullet caught him right in the forehead. So uh, this is something that I think is ludicrous. And you may go, I may offend some of the Wild West people, I don't care. We shouldn't be teaching people it's okay to twirl a handgun. If you want to twirl something, go get you a baton or a broomstick or something, but don't do it on a handgun or any firearm for that matter. Uh, even the people in the military deal that do the, the rifle twirling, heck, they train with wooden, with wooden rifles. So it's just not something... We've got to be conscious of these things, friends, because we have people who are watching our program, who are, who are looking at us as shooters, and they see these ignorant things in the movies and on some of the TV shows, they say, well, that's okay. Well, it's not okay, and we need to tell people about it as many as we can. So we need to think safety, safety, and safety. Uh, something else we're going to look at today on safeguarding a revolver. Uh, you can take a regular padlock, and on a double action revolver, you can put the lock behind the trigger, like so, get a big enough lock where uh, the trigger can't come all the way back. And see, that will prevent the gun from being fired. Just put the lock behind the trigger, and see, on a, on a double action revolver, the trigger can't come far enough back, it can't be cocked. Another option that we have is to lock, put the lock through the top strap here. And see, the cylinder cannot close. That's one method of making the gun safe. And so on this uh, semi-automatic, you can take this cable lock like so, and we'll bring the gun back. We'll, and all you have to do is just run the cable down through the magazine well, see? And then the slide cannot close. There's no way this gun can be fired until this, this lock is removed. And so on this single action, what you can do is put the cable through the uh, loading gate there and lock it and see the gun one the loading gate will not close it cannot uh, be cocked or fired that's one way of doing it making our gun safe friends just some things to look at here because we're going to be coming under more and more scrutiny by the anti-gun people and in truth there is no excuse not to be safe certainly our first order of duty is to teach our children uh, about how guns work, but remember, you may have somebody else's kids come to your home, and even if you don't have guns in your own home, your children will go to someone else's house that they may have guns, and they need to understand just how these things work. One, we never, ever, never, ever point this muzzle at anything that we can't afford to shoot or afford to lose. Never.
don't point at the dog, not at the kids, not at your brother or sister, never, ever at anything. And two, we never forget about that one that could be in the chamber on the semi-automatic. Just a few safety tips that uh, certainly can be or will be helpful to some of us and believe me, might prevent a tragedy. Well, hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of our shooting program, and we certainly want to welcome everyone to today's program. You can see we have a special guest on today's show, and this young lady is, of course, Earlene Mandrell. And Earlene, it's a little, it's a little cool out today, huh? It's freezing. I was glad I could borrow a coat. <laughs> well, well, absolutely. Uh, we are here on a, a lovely afternoon. We've, we're blessed, blessed with good weather. Uh, a little cooler than it has it's been cooler, this but week. It's not raining, huh? <laughs> but we're just outside Nashville, Tennessee, and of course, many of you will remember Earlene. Uh, she's been all over the television set for many years, and also she's a lovely person, and she is a shooting enthusiast. And of course, that's why she's on our program today. And we're going to be talking about guns. We're going to be talking about women in shooting. But how about let's get the shooting show underway. Earlene, you want to open the show today? I'd love to do some shooting. I'm not an expert, but I love it, and I want to see what I can well, do. Well, you're, but you're underway. You're I'm an expert on the way. Under I'm trying right? to learn. That's right. Louise, what is this particular gun? <laughs> It's Erlene. <laughs> what did I say? You said Louise, and that's okay. Next well, time you can say Barbara. <laughs> uh, Barbara, what? Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. This is called a Shorty 40, and it is a 40 caliber. And this is really nice because normally I shoot a 9mm, and I wasn't sure about the recoil on this, but it is it is really great. And also, it has a double action that I was shooting to start with in this thing, and it's very, very smooth trigger. It's very easy for me. It's uh, well, woman with not real strong hands. That's what important. we have seen from Smith & Wesson is they've gone to a lot of trouble to uh, ensure that trigger pulls are consistent. Now, uh, this gun, you have a, a I suppose, a medium-sized uh, woman's hand, probably, and it does fit you well. It fits me very well. I feel very comfortable. Well, why don't we take some pictures of you shooting uh, this particular gun on the, of course, you open the program with bowling pins. Why don't we get some, some pictures of some of the ladies. Now, ladies, as we're always saying, it doesn't matter what your stature is. We were talking, of course, I'm taller than Earlene here, but that's really immaterial when you're shooting a, a gun because someone, uh, for instance, Kay Clark Michalik is the current world champion women shooter, and she's not uh, as tall as you are, and she's certainly a, a uh, near petite person, and uh, when she's shooting on the range, uh, the fellows that I shoot with, we just let her finish and we, <laughs> she's pretty awesome, and, isn't she? Yeah, we just let her finish, and then we'll, you know, we'll start shooting. So, ladies, it doesn't matter by stature what uh, some of the ladies may be concerned about, and that's one reason I like the 40 caliber. It's uh, with bullet selection available in the 40 caliber, you can go from a relatively soft recoil round uh, to some some really harder stuff. But uh, the nine millimeter is not a bad consideration. The 9mm has gotten some bad press, but remember, friends, it's not as much what you hit them with, it's where you hit them. And this accuracy is really, really important. One of the nice things about the Smith & Wessons is they are as reliable as any handgun made, certainly that I'm aware of. And believe me, every, on this program, we everything goes bang, it's come through here. <laughs> this one's pretty light to me, too, because I was carrying a SIG which I love, but this one's pretty light. Well, this nice. one has aluminum carry, carry in it. Yes. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we had the we had the double action only version of this here on the show. And of course, uh, we're being very careful around the animals and before we shoot again. But I don't think the, the dog's gonna enjoy the, the noise, probably not as much as... She'll, she'll go off, she's not <laughs> afraid of it. Well, we're certainly, we're certainly very careful around. Yes. And that is something to be considered. Uh, when you go to the range, be sure that your pets are in a, a reasonable situation so they can't possibly get any sort of ricochet and remember uh, this dog's ears are much more sensitive than our own and I'm wearing earplugs and of course here are your yes. ear, ear muscle protectors and that is something to think about that never uh, uh, I certainly wouldn't shoot a handgun over a dog's uh, head or around because it will really shock their hearing even worse than ours so that's just a little something that we're very conscious of out here today and, and you folks should be too all right let's do some shooting Sounds good. 
Now, Erlene has the uh, our test uh, a Sigma from Smith & Wesson. In fact, now you really like your short 40 with aluminum frame, right? Yes. It's a little bit smaller gun than this. Why don't you try shooting the, the Sigma, and I'm going to step back over here. You go ahead, and if you want to take a step forward to get a little better in line there with our camera shot. But go ahead and try that. I'm going to step back and, and see how you like that as compared. Okay. And we're out. Well, what would you think? We only had uh, a few in the magazine there, had several. Okay. That's nice. Did you notice a lot of difference in recoil with that and your short 40? It seems like it has a little, a little stronger more. recoil. Uh -huh. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. And we want to mention the good folks at Clark Custom Guns in Princeton, Louisiana, one of the most complete gun shops in the entire United States. They do all sorts of things like this specialty meltdown on this new STI gun. Also, uh, they have an excellent staff of people to help you with guns such as these Benelli Super Black Eagles taking three and a half inch uh, magnums, a complete line of handguns, semi-automatics, revolvers, all sorts of neat things in the shop there. And of course, here's Mr. Jim Clark himself out helping a customer, some of the nicest people you'd ever want to meet. They have a complete line of loading supplies, loading tools, gunpowder, you name it, primers, uh, all sorts of accessories for your guns, uh, whatever you might need, certainly within reason. Here's Kay Clark Michalik when she's not winning championships, back working there in the office. And here's her husband, Jerry Michalik, the fastest revolver shooter in the world when he's not winning championships at work. Here's Jim Clark Jr. back on the lathe, the same drill, when he's not winning championships, working right there in the shop. That's why you can get such complete quality of product and expertise here at Clark Custom Guns. Friends, give them a call today, area 318-949-9884. They have a great catalog. We appreciate them supporting our project. And now, friends, let's do a brief review of our 460 Roland demo. Uh, we're going to shoot some of the 1,500-plus feet per second loads. Let's see what it looks like. Now, some of you might be saying, well, what in the world? We want a bullet, a somewhere around a 45 caliber bullet running 1,500 feet per second. Wouldn't it be terribly over penetrative or even 1350 well let's do a little demonstration on that we have a couple of water bottles over here back to back and we have some bowling pins behind them as a little brace just to keep them up there together and let's watch what happens when we shoot this 1500 feet per second bullet into those water bottles watch this My friends, you see, it just literally shredded the first water bottle. But look here. Of course, it blew up the second. But guess what? Our bullet is completely, let's see. Our bullet is completely expanded and did not go through the second water bottle because of the breakup and expansion of that bullet so we don't have over penetration unless we want a bullet style that will penetrate now let's say we want penetration maybe we want to stop that bear that may be chasing us on the lake up there or the river in alaska uh maybe we need penetration 
So let's take a landscape timber, very tough, treated lumber, several inches thick, and let's lean it up against this water bottle right here. Get it where it'll stay. And let's shoot the landscape timber and see what happens. Got a, one of our full metal jacket loads here. All right, let's take a look, friends. Clear through the landscape timber, in and out, all the way through. In and definitely out <laughs> on the water bottle. So see, we have tremendous penetration if we so desire. Uh, just for fun, since we're here, let's see what our new cartridge, <coughs> our new rolling cartridge does to, let's try concrete blocks with our, with our high powered load. Let's see what happens. Just to show the power that this thing has. <laughs> Quite a bit, actually. <laughs> now then, let's try another block with our uh, deer hunting load, which would probably be the 200 grain bullet at about 1400 or so, 1440. See how the block fares with it. Huh. Now friends, you can tell why I'm so excited about this cartridge concept. Uh, we have a special package, a little, quite a bit of engineering has gone into this and we thanks to all our friends and uh, of course, I've worked real hard on this for, for quite some time, and uh, it is very durable. Certainly, uh, the gun, these guns are very rugged, and we engineered it so it won't destroy the gun. So uh, it is certainly safe, super accurate. We've been getting groups of uh, an inch and a half all the way down to with one of the loads we tried slightly under one inch with this uh, custom package here. And these guns are going to be reasonably priced. They're not going to be outrageous uh, in cost. They're going to be reasonably priced. Well, friends, I tell you, I hope you've enjoyed our program today. In fact, the judge actually came by here during the time we started to edit the program and, and now at the end. And he is a practicing attorney, and he had to get back to the office. He didn't have time to sit down and do a piece with us because uh, he had a client waiting on him. But uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed going back. It was fun to see Arlene Mandrell, such a lovely person. And also, going back in time, uh, Chief A.J., uh, he is quite a colorful character. I don't... I've kind of lost track of him. I don't know what uh, <laughs> whatever happened to Chief A.J., but last time I saw him, I saw him was at a SHOT show, and uh, he was in his full headdress deal, so we thought that would be entertaining, and certainly uh, I found some things there instructive. Speaking of the SHOT show, the SHOT show is coming up uh, the first week in February. It's going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. And some of you may know about this, but the mayor of Atlanta has... Uh, filed, joined the lawsuit against the gun companies and you know as I understand it somewhere between 30 and 50 thousand people will be coming to the SHOT Show in downtown Atlanta. Now this 30 to 50 thousand people will be bringing about somewhere between five and ten million dollars according to figures I've heard anyway to the Atlanta community. Now wait a minute and the mayor files a lawsuit against the gun community, I tell you what, if I had any say-so over the NSSF, which I don't, I'd pull it out of there so quickly. I mean, talk about the brazen unappreciation or lack of appreciation. Uh, it is fantastic. Jim, would you hand me that rifle, please, sir? Uh, we have a, a special, a friend of, the, uh, of ours brought by a... A, an unusual piece. Now, friends, this is an 1860s model Spencer carbine, and uh, this is essentially a wall hanger today, but it certainly has some historical value. And this was one of the very first uh, repeating or successful repeating uh, guns, uh, certainly rifles, uh, came along after the Colt revolver, but uh, still, as far as a cartridge gun, a certainly this was the gun that. The Confederates said the Yankees would load on Sunday and then they shot it all week because 
it had a magazine here in the stock. I hope you can hear me here if I can keep my microphone in place. It had a magazine in the stock, and how it worked, you would lever it. It would lever a cartridge out of the magazine into the chamber, and then you would cock it, and it would fire. And it's really an interesting piece of work. Uh, uh, this would have been the anti-gun people in the 1860s would have called this an assault gun. But you know what, friends? If we don't stop the anti-gun people of today, they won't even allow us to have these. And the only guns that we'll see will be in museums somewhere. And I wanted to make that point. This is a most interesting piece of, of American history. But friends, uh, whether it's that old Spencer Carbine or this modern Dan Wesson or whatever else, if we don't turn this thing around, you're going to have more cities just like Atlanta. These are harassment lawsuits that are being filed against a tiny industry, the gun industry, which is a very small industry. They don't have the money that tobacco had. And, you know, if, if the anti-gun people succeeded in putting a tax the size of the tobacco tax on guns, well, you'll have gun taxes running hundreds of dollars. And, of course, what they want is total eradication of guns. We're asking that you consider helping us. Please consider joining our Gun Owner Rights Association, friends, because, honestly, we as gun owners have a very short lifespan left for our hobby or for being able to protect ourselves if we don't get some things done and we don't get started doing it quickly. Uh, let me recognize our support group. We appreciate so much. These are smaller sponsors, but let me tell you what, they're definitely important sponsors to us. I uh, certainly want to recognize Steadcraft, a custom machine shop in Torrington, Connecticut. We have uh, their number is area 860-496-7001. We have Dennis Crocker, a firearms trainer in South Carolina. And Dennis's number is area 864-587-8722. We have Custom Leather Work and Saddlery in Denham Springs, Louisiana. Uh, they do all kinds of leather works. Our, our good friends Dennis and Jeannie Ritchie. Their number is area 504-667-9225. We have Camouflage Technologies, the folks that do such a great job on painting gun stocks and all kinds of neat patterns. You can reach them at area 909-674-6488. And we have Flying Horse Galleries. Uh, you can find them on the internet at www.flyinghorse.net. And we have our good friend Bruce Warren with BC Armory. He works on semi-automatic pistols and revolvers. And we're going to try and get Bruce's uh, uh, instruction tape on uh, next week. We do not have time for it today, but Bruce's number is area 616-729-5508. And we also want to recognize the Little River Trading Company. They specialize in Confederate memorabilia, Civil War era stuff. Uh, they're in Cadiz, Kentucky, and their number is area 502-522-6167. Friends, I tell you what, we appreciate you being here with us today. We're trying to stay on the air. And we hope that, that you will help us stay on the air. Remember our gospel show on Sunday morning from 10 to 10.30 Eastern Time, now on G6 Channel 7. And please remember our radio show on the American Freedom Network on SpaceNet 4, Channel 19, 5.82 audio. Tell you what, friends, this fight is not going away, and we're going to stay on as long as is humanly possible. Please remember our new cartridge, the 460 Roland. It is underway. Hopefully we'll have a test next week on our shooting show. And again, thanks for being with us. We'll see you on the next program. Ha, ha, ha.